Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. Is this video arguably late? Yes. However, I have seen other people do it and post it like two days ago. So I decided I'm gonna do it anyway. Some of the things that I'm gonna mention today have been things that I've actively previously mentioned in my favorites videos because this is the roundup of the whole year. But some of the things are things that I didn't mention but I did like throughout the year as well. I think we should start with beauty just cause I have the most of it. I'm gonna start off with this. This is the Liquid Crystal Eyeshadow Trio by Beauty Bay. You have different trios on the website. One of them is gonna be a part of the giveaway, not the same one. The one that I have here is Equinox. The one that will be in the giveaway is Celestial because I could not find this one for the life of me on the website. So I just got the nearest pretty one, but they're all super, super gorgeous. And they're they remind me a lot of the Steeler ones, and I only have one of the Steeler, but even packaging wise, they're very, you know they're just trying to, to do that kind of thing. And those are the colours I have, so we have like a really really nice iridescent, this is what it's called. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's like a really nice white silver, which is why I got this pack, because I really wanted this one. Um, it's gorgeous, I love it. And then we have Tiger's Eye, which is kind of like this copper brown colour. This one's stunning as well. And I, the one that I have from Stila is a gold, so this one goes very, very well with it as well, if you want to mix them together. And then the third one I have is sm uh, Smoky Quartz. And it's like a pretty, okay, focus. It's like a really pretty khaki color. Again, would be lovely to mix up with gold as well, or like a really nice smoky eye. But I really, really like them. I, I haven't been using them probably as much as I should. However, every time I have used them, I've loved them. And that's why I thought I'd include them today because they are worth mentioning and they're so much cheaper than the Steeler ones. I think the Steeler ones are like £17 and these are about a, a fiver each. Um, and if you get the three pack, I think it works out a little bit cheaper as well. So I would absolutely recommend them. Very good dupe for if you're balling on a budget or just in general if you don't want to spend 20 quid on a fucking liquid eyeshadow because I'll be honest with you, I got my Stila one at TJ Maxx in the US and I think it was under a tenner and that's why I got it. If it was 20 bucks, I would not have gotten it. I, everything I've gotten from Stila was either in a subscription box or in sale. Not saying that it's not worth the money because I think it absolutely is, I just don't have that money. You know, that kind of thing. Especially when you can find something of pretty much the same or similar quality for a fraction of the price, so. Yes. Next up, we have the Back to Bronze Bronzing Powder by L'Oreal. As you can see, mine is gone. She's gone. I have been using this again since like March or April. Love her. I think it just, for my skin tone anyways, and I think that they should really expand their shade range because I'm pretty sure they have three shades max and I think that's just atrocious. For my skin tone, because I'm pale but I'm not cool tone pale I would say my skin is a little bit warmish although maybe these lights might be washing me out so that might not be visible and this is just such a pretty contour shade because you can't really see it but at the same time it gives you like you can't see the actual contour but it does make your face look a little bit more snatched which in my case can't hurt and this mixed with a really nice like Illuminizing bronzer or something darker to actually bronze up the face So pretty I need to repurchase another one But obviously we can't leave the house nowadays and I'm trying not to make as many online purchases So the next time I'm ordering some makeup when I'm out of more things This will definitely be on the list. While we're on the topic of L'Oreal. I have the Glow Cherie Natural Glow Enhancer I am Basically out of this because I've again I've used it pretty much this whole year and it's basically gone i am still trying to scrape like the last little bit of this because i love it so much i love it so much and i really really need to repurchase it again because it just 
I wear it under my skin pretty much every day because you can't really feel it but I feel like it gives your skin such nice radiance even if you're wearing a slightly matte foundation it just doesn't make your face look flat but while it does that it doesn't make you look cakey or unnatural and I really really like it because of that again I think they have three shades but obviously this is not a foundation so it goes light medium and dark so I think this is the kind of product that you can buy regardless of skin tone because L'Oreal while their foundations have pretty good range their powders their concealers at least in drugstore maybe online they're better they're just awful but this is something that you can use no matter the skin tone and it's just it's gorgeous and it's so affordable so can't recommend enough i have three products from revolution today and i think revolution was such a good brand this year because it's the quality of the makeup is really really nice but at the same time they're not overly expensive and some of the releases that they've had this year have actually been really really lovely so the first thing i'm going to mention is the Revolution Skincare Toning Boost Balcure Eye Cream. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the purple one. This one. I was trying to get the, I think, yellow one because I was trying to get rid of my eye bags, but I couldn't because it was completely sold out. So I thought I'd get this and try it out. It is really, really nice. I would say that my eyes have probably been more like a little bit lifted and it does keep your under eye quite hydrated. And yeah, I just, I highly recommend revolution skincare i do have one of their masks as well the detoxifying clay mask really love that as well i forgot to bring it in i was actually going to show that as well but i really do love that one again like their makeup affordable but quality you know and that's what we want that's what we want so second thing from revolution i have is the pout bomb plump and lip gloss with vitamin e this is in the shade cookie however I also have the clear one and it is not the type of plumping glo gloss that you may think of when you think plumping it doesn't like itch your lips it is minty so it has like a really nice like peppermint thing kind of in it that makes your lips I don't know I guess appear bigger I really like them I think they're just not too sticky um, they have a good pigmentation or in the case of the clear one it is nice and clear and it is really really nice and glossy hold on i'll put it on you can see it it's nice it's not like too overly glossy but it's glossy enough you know what i mean i personally really really like it i am the type of person that no matter what lip gloss i wear or lipstick i talk too much so it always comes off anyways so i can't really tell you on that one but i like this product it's about fiver i like the peppermint on my lips it makes me feel fresh so i would absolutely recommend it the clear one of that will be in the giveaway as well so and the last thing i have from revolution is the glass skin primer you can kind of see a theme here with the primers that i use they're mostly like illuminating enhancers kind of thing this one is a very bizarre one. You put this on and you just think, mm, I'm gonna look like a sweaty bitch. That's what you think. And it's not true. Because if you powder your face nicely enough, it appears quite flawless. But in the right lighting, it just makes your face look so dewy, so lovely. I can't quite explain it. Obviously, I wouldn't really use it with a super oily foundation because I think that would just be you know just a lot but if you use it with like a satin i've used it with the milani foundation and i've used it with the revolution foundation the conceal and perfect so not the hydrating one and i've loved it with those two you always think you put on powder with this and you think mm, this is going to cover it all up what's the point and then it just pulls through and it gives you the the most i don't know natural looking glow to your skin it's very bizarre, but I just can't get enough of it. Obviously, I haven't been using it every day. It depends on the foundation I use, and it also will depend on your skin. I have normal to combination skin, like I have a little bit of oiliness on my T-zone, but this is, ever since my fringe grew out, this is me after a couple of hours of wearing my makeup and feeling like shit. So it's holding up pretty good. I'm not wearing this today, I'm wearing a glossary today, but I just, there is something about this product that I keep going back to and I can't get enough of. Every time I wear it, my skin just looks 
nice and fresh and I love it so I had to include it in this one because I've been loving it ever since I got it in like April. I lied. I have one more thing from Revolution that I really really love and I forgot that it was in there and it is the Monica lipstick from the Revolution X Friends collection. It is just the prettiest little pinky peach bullshit colour that I've ever seen but it just looks so nice on the lips. I really like those sorts of colours because depending on the day, this would be very, very lovely for spring. Very lovely for spring. That makes me happy because spring is coming up and I already have a lip colour, you know? I love it. Quality is good. I have all three lipsticks. I have three lip glosses and I have all three palettes from the Friends Collection and the mirror. I've been loving them all. I've been using the Monica eyeshadow palette for the last three months while I was in Poland with my family. Do hit a like or give me a comment if you'd like to see like a whole review or like three separate videos on each of the palettes. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that lipstick because it's really lovely. While we're on the topic of lipsticks, I just want to mention one of my favourite combos for lipstick this year, which is the... what are you called? Natural Cream Lip Liner by LA Girl. And the NYX Suede Matte Lipstick in the shade Stockholm. They're so stunning. This one's actually like a more muted version. It's like a more peachy version of the Monica. The Monica is the more pinky one, this is the Stockholm one. I just like those sorts of colours, I think they look good on me. This one we're in right now, aside from obviously the lip gloss. And I just, I really really love this combination. Next two that I have are from Makeup Obsession. First one I'm going to talk about is the Makeup Obsession Mega Honey Highlighter. This is the highlighter I'm wearing today, and bear in mind this is after a couple of hours, but this is such a gorgeous highlighter. Again, this will be part of the giveaway as well. Such a gorgeous highlighter. At first, I thought it was a little bit too light for me, but then I, you know, realised that I was in the sun more in the spring that year than I was before, so I was probably a little bit tanned, but I still made it work and it was still really, really lovely. It's such a nice golden colour, so if you have a slightly warmer skin, it will definitely work on you, but I think this is one that you can make work on most skin tones, unless you're super, super cool toned. And the last thing I have from Makeup Obsession is the Love Is My Drag palette. This was one of my most used palettes this year. I got this palette like back in January of 2020 because I wanted to do a Valentine's Day look with it which I did I just never posted it so if you would like to see that and I can find it let me know down below and I'll post that this year. I really really like this palette. The shimmers are very very lovely. I'm wearing the the one I hit pat on right now because it's clearly my favourite. They're really really nice and you can use them both with your finger and the brush. Yeah I've just really really grown to love this. I reach for it quite often just because it's so nice and neutral. You get enough shades to create so many looks out of it. Like you get a purple, you get a brown, like a darker brown. I wish it had a slightly darker brown. But you have the like more orangey browns as well. You have a gold, you have something a little bit more cool toned. I think you just can do so much with this palette. If it was a little bit smaller, I would travel with it everywhere because it has a nice big mirror. It's affordable, I think it was like a tenner and it's such good quality. And I just love it. I don't know if we would count this as beauty as well, but I wanted to mention it. This is a whole ass pack of dirty, reusable makeup rounds. I got this for my birthday for my best friend, Bethany. And I have to say, ever since I did get them, I do use actual cotton buds less. I haven't stopped buying them completely just some because sometimes I just can't be fucked to wash these and I just buy a small pack. But these are amazing and I think if I had like another pack of two of these reusable ones, honestly, I wouldn't have to use any more one use cotton rounds because they're really really nice. They're fairly affordable and again this is not something you throw away or at least it's not something you dispose of immediately so straight away saves you money. I would say this is a great investment and I've been really loving them. I thought I was done with beauty but one last thing I want to mention was the Wet n Wild Mokalicious lipstick because I bought it at the recommendation of Royal Beauty Christie and I've loved it. I've lost mine right now, I can't find it which is typical for me filming videos but I love that lipstick. I think it's such a gorgeous colour and it's so affordable. Now we're going to move on to fashion. I don't have many fashion items, but I have a few that I've been really loving. They're mostly kind of loungy wear because what have we been doing all year of 2020? Sitting on our asses, 
or if you're one of those amazing people you've been productive for which I hate and love you at the same time you go do you but also I don't have that kind of motivation first thing I'm gonna mention is actually a dress and it is a dress that I haven't worn that much but it's not the dress that I'm talking about it's the style of dress and I want to talk about these cool like slip dresses because I have a few. I'm gonna be getting rid of some of them just so I can buy one more nice one. I love them because they're so versatile. You can wear them in the summer really nicely with that kind of slit in the leg, you know? Lovely, you can wear it in spring or autumn, you know, with some Doc Martens, I need to get some, or in a, like a turtleneck underneath and it just looks gorgeous. You can even wear it in the winter with like a thicker jumper and some tights and it would look really nice here's the thing it's very hard to find the right material of them this is one that i found at new look on sale for i think like eight pounds and it has adjustable straps the only issue with it is that it doesn't have the slit but that's not an issue because i can make that myself it's like it's cotton Whereas normally they're like a weird satin kind of material. I never actually explained what I was trying to say. What I was trying to say is that sometimes, and I've had this issue with Boohoo, they give you like a jersey material and it's also not like loose and flowy and that really bothers me. That's what I was trying to say. Moving on. No, a slip dress should be either cotton so it's flowy or it should be like a silk satin material so it's flowy. I'm very passionate about this topic, okay? I'm annoyed. But this one is such a, such a perfect material. I love it. They're supposed to flow. That's my point. And I really like them. I just think they're so versatile and they're so on trend right now. And I'm not the most stylish person, but I am trying my best. And I just like this dress. And I can't wait for spring so I can actually wear it. Now that I've shown you my nice item, let me show you the trashy items. Trashy item number one, sweatshirt. I, again, this sweatshirt is a recent favorite because I got this in Poland. Um, sweatshirts, again, one thing about them, when you have a weird size body like I do, you learn that not all clothes are made the same, okay? Not all clothes are made the same. I am a mid-size gal, I am a size 16, 14 on a good day. And I've been like that pretty much my whole life. The smallest I've ever been was a 12, the biggest I've ever been is a 16, and I continue to be on that scale. And when you have a curvier body, you realize that certain things that suit skinny bitches, I mean skinny bitches with the most utmost respect because I love you all, that shit that looks good on them just doesn't look good on me. So for example, sweatshirts, you would think, you know, an oversized sweatshirt will look good. Go to the men's section, bitch, you'll get one. No, nah. -uh. It just doesn't look as good, okay? It just doesn't. And this one, for some reason, the way it's made, these are supposed to be hella oversized. This is a medium and this is amazing. And it's like just the right amount of oversized, but just the right amount of fitting where it needs to fit to look a little bit 80s, but it doesn't make me look like a fucking slob. And I enjoy it. Also, it's bloody comfortable and I like that it's already kind of that worn in style, you know, like if you look at it, it's already kind of vintage looking and it has that faded grey black look. I'm in love with it. I um, washed it probably not enough times since I got it and worn it way too many times for the amount of times that I've washed it, but love it, amazing. And um, you can get it on Paul and Bear in the US as well, or at least you can get a similar style. I'll try and link it down below all the similar ones, but I think on payday I'm gonna have to get another one. Maybe not the same, but I just, it's just my fucking favorite. My year really wasn't that exciting, so I'm taking the pleasures out of the good things of it, you know? And this sweatshirt is one of them. The last two fashion items, as I said, I don't have many fashion items, but the last two, our slouchy t-shirts what have we been doing this year 2020 last year nothing or if you have you know we've talked about this but i love a slouchy t-shirt as it is and being at home all the time just gave me the excuse to wear them all the time so i thought i'd mention two of my current favorites i've been kind of drifting between seasons depending on them but these are newer additions to my slouchy big fucking t-shirt collection 
and ones that I've been loving for the last couple of months. Just like every other basic bitch on this planet, I do love me some astrology. And I love me an astrology t-shirt, so this is the first one. It is currently my pyjama t-shirt. It is from Daisy Street on ASOS. And this is in a size 1820, which I don't realize. I don't know why. I've... Maybe it wasn't supposed to be oversized. I don't know. Because, hold on a second. So this one is like a normal oversized size from Daisy Street. Love it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It reminds me, feeling wise, of the same, sh not the same, but a similar sh black shirt that I have that Cass got me from his work like two years ago. I absolutely love that shirt. Never could have washed the smell out of it, but I love the shirt. So this is like a normal oversized t-shirt. This, I mean, I understand an oversized t-shirt, you know? I understand an oversized t-shirt. I live for an oversized t-shirt. But Daisy Street, first of all, I love you. I would, their clothing is really cute. And I got this shirt over here. I don't think the camera can tell you how massive it is, but to put it in perspective, it could fit my father and he's not massive but he is a man and i do get my weight from him so take of that what you will this is an extra large um or a uk 14 as they claim i swim in this i could i swim in this this is so big it's so big i if i knew this was going to be this big i would have sized down like this would have been oversized even if I went a size smaller than me. It's huge. Am I complaining? Absolutely not. I am just surprised. But I love it, it's cute. I never got a t-shirt when I actually went to New York, so I thought, let me get myself this one. And it goes well with some pajama pants that I recently got, so I appreciate that. But that is it for clothing from me today. Next up, I think we'll just move on to lifestyle and random. I think most of these can be qualified as some sort of lifestyle, but just general term, you know, general term. First of all, I want to share two of my favorite candle scents this year, which you've already heard of if you watch my previous videos, but one of them is the Wickford & Co Hibiscus & White Sand. Love this bitch. She is my favorite. She is my favorite. If I could get my house to smell like this permanently, it's amazing. And the other one is Hawaiian Breeze, again by Wickford & Co. I, this is so nice. It's a little bit peachy, I like it. I like it a lot. Normally, I get them from Home Bargains. These are part of the giveaway as well. Another thing I want to share is my favorite, not perfume, but sp like scented spray of the year, which is the Bloom Collection from Superdrug, the Driftwood and Sea Salt Body Mist. I got the small one, like the small little travel vial of this for two pounds randomly, because I was like, mm, I love a good body spray. And I just loved it so much that I ended up buying this whole big one. This one is, I don't know how to, explain the scent it's kind of it's kind of feminine but it's kind of masculine it's that kind of you'd have to smell it for yourself i'm very bad at describing scents a contemporary classic fragrance combining amber and fresh notes of bergamot infused with base notes of sandalwood so it's a bit musty and i really really liked it i've been using it since the summer i want to say yes i think i got the small one sometime in the summer and yeah, I still use it every day. I have half of this in like a little perfume bottle that I sprayed as well. And this one I just keep in my bag, but they're not too expensive. I think they're like two for seven pounds or one for like a fiver or something, something weird like that. They had a promotion going, but they're not too expensive. Obviously this is a plastic bottle, so I don't expect too much, but they smell nice and you can't go wrong. Like sometimes you have expensive perfume that you don't want to use every day this is something that you could use every day it smells nice just try it out just smell it it's nice just smell it another thing i wanted to show you which i don't know who's watching me right now but it might be a bit weird to you to put in a favorite but i wanted to show some of my crystals these are some of my crystals this is mostly my um abundance and good luck pack so i have citrine for abundance i have opalite for dreams blue tiger's eye for courage you know this is some of them i have way more but i've been really getting into like crystals and witchy shit this year i'm surprised i haven't earlier because my dad's been into that shit my whole life i love them i just think they're so 
nice and they are genuinely healing I think whether you believe it or not it doesn't hurt to try you know it doesn't hurt to try what's it gonna do if you don't believe in it another witchy thing I'd like to show you is my deck of tarot cards because they're my babies and I love them and also I haven't touched them in about a week and it's probably time to do so. Uh, ink and Intuition Tattoo Tarot Cards. I will try and find them and link them down below. I got them for my birthday from Bethany. From what I heard, and I might be incorrect, you're supposed to receive your first tarot deck. I love them. I love them so much. And I think they're pretty well matched to me because so far most of the readings that i did either for myself or for some other people i don't really do readings for other people nor am i probably gonna do many readings on here just simply because i am a baby witch i sure as hell don't want to get on the wrong side of the witchy community so i'm just for now gonna be playing around if you have any questions about it ask me down below i'll see if i can answer them i like this deck and i think it likes me <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to say, but it's really, really nice. Um, some of my favorite cards, if I can find them. All the women in this card, in these, are so lovely. The, like, the art of it is so nice. And this might be the little punk bitch in me who just fucking loves <laughs> tattoos and traditional tattoos, despite the fact that I'm probably never gonna get like a traditional style tattoo on myself. I mean, look at this bitch. Bad bitch hours. My favorite ones are the star. If I can find it, that would be amazing. Do you not want to be found right now? That's okay. She wanted to be found, that's okay. I just think she's fucking gorgeous. I think she's stunning. I love her. But anyway, so yeah, those are my tarot cards. If you have any recommendations for any like witch tube youtubers hit me up because i would really oh she wants to be seen today i would really appreciate it just because i just want to learn more about all that because right now i'm very very much at the beginning stages i do have some books um about it that i got in 2020 but i haven't quite gotten into them in depth but i just wanted to show my tarot deck it's really pretty it wouldn't be a good video if i didn't mention my marshals at least once because i got them for christmas and honestly i look ridiculous and honestly i just i love them they're so good they're so good when you're out and about because you can just you know bluetooth it but they're also very very good for like working on the computer like i had an assignment due last wednesday and i really had to cram it for like monday tuesday wednesday and honestly just plugging these into my laptop i hate trying to connect bluetooth to my laptop let's not talk about it but just being able to plug in my headphones to laptops without having to get like earbuds was a real comfort and these really do help to zone me out so i'm very grateful to have those and they're definitely gonna get so much use in 2021 because i got so much use out of my jbls when i had them for a couple of years and these are even better not necessarily sound quality wise because i love jbl sound quality but just make quality you can tell it's a really nice pair of headphones and the cable is just an added bonus that i didn't know i needed but i definitely love one last thing for lifestyle it's gonna be my switch have you seen a singular favorite video without someone mentioning a switch or something because every single one i've seen someone said something about a switch and i have to agree they are amazing. I only have the Switch Lite because at the time where I got it, I'm not gonna say I didn't have that much money because I did, but I didn't think it through, you know? This was pretty. And also, I'm not really a huge console player anyway, so I just thought this would be a great addition. After thinking about it and living a little bit more alone <laughs> and my sister not being here with her big Switch, I wish I got the big one, but I love my light. I um, love the color of it. I'm glad I chose yellow. It just makes me happy to look at it. So when I use it, it's just such a happy experience. I do mostly play Animal Crossing on it still. I did download Overwatch, but I just didn't have time to play it yet because it was more recent. I've downloaded Minecraft, so I want to kind of play around in that. And I've played a more interactive Minecraft game as well, which I really liked as well. I think it was called Minecraft Dungeons but I really enjoyed that too. I'm not much of a gamer, but this is such a good in-between 
kind of console because it has such nice there's more games available for like i don't know 10 year olds i need games for 10 year olds like intended for 10 year olds it might just be because i didn't grow up with video games so i didn't get used to it i'm trying my best but i love my switch i love it let's move on to movies and tv shows just because i want to end it on music because i have a bit more to say about that let's move on to movies and tv shows just because i want to end it on music because i have a bit more to say um, in terms of movies, I haven't really been watching many new movies unless they came out on Netflix or something like that because obviously we weren't really able to go to the cinema or anything like that. But I did really enjoy Enola Holmes, which I know for a fact came out in 2020. I think it was such a fun little movie, you know, fun family movie. I enjoyed it very much. Other than that, in terms of movies, I've done a lot of rewatching. So I've rewatched all of Twilight multiple times, all of Harry Potter at least twice. I've seen Just Go With It and Let Us Juliet 20 million fucking times, including right now. I don't really watch many new movies unless it's really captivating, but since we weren't really able to go to the cinema, I didn't get the chance to do that. So, film department, a little bit shitty. TV show, on the other hand, well, that's a different story. Right, let's start with ones that aren't new, but I watched for the first time this year, like fully. So we have Modern Family, love, 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 just finished re-watching i just need to find the last two seasons somewhere because i just don't have them on netflix however prime might have them i love it i just think it's so <laughs> it's so funny and call me basic for that absolutely i just love it it's my type of humor it's really good to binge but it's really good to leave in the background and still know what's happening you know that kind of thing loved it vampire diaries don't get me started on this one because i have some fucking opinions but this year was the first year that I finally got to watching it. It was good, although fuck, I think the second or third season was just so dry and it was hard to get back into it, I gotta say that. Overall, great show, top notch, top notch content. Gilmore Girls, I think this, I think 2020 or 2019 was the first time I watched Gilmore Girls. However, Gilmore Girls in my family has become a family show. <laughs> Me and my parents during the first lockdown watched all of the seasons of Gilmore Girls, including The Year in a Life, which they didn't really vibe with, which I kind of get. They could have made it better, but it's just going to be a show that's going to stay close to my heart always. And this year is the reason why. So I think it was worth mentioning. Beginning of 2020, Love is Blind. I really vibed with it. I watched all of the episodes in one day while doing my nails in like March. It was good. I, I got hooked. I'm not gonna lie. I love a good trash TV show. Here's the thing. It's just fun. <laughs> it's fun entertainment. Like there is, it was good. Like there's a reason people watched it so much. It's cause it was pretty decent. I just think it was a fun experiment to watch. Next up we have The Witcher. That came out in 2020, right? Right? Either way, I'm pretty sure I watched it in 2020 and I loved it, it was amazing. I grew up with my dad reading the books, not to me, not to me. He listened to them on audiobooks and once in a while let me listen to it. Obviously it was a little bit too inappropriate for a kid to actually read or listen to. The Witcher is one of those things that was always in my life. So to see it in such a good production, because the Polish production, we don't talk about it. However, this one was so good. And while my dad doesn't agree, I enjoyed the cast. I really liked them. I thought they were they were great for them. I can't wait for them to bring out more. Can't wait for the next season. It was so good. Euphoria. Haven't finished it yet. However, it was good. It was really good. I liked it. I need to finish it. I get where the hype was, but I also don't at the same time. Like, it was good, but everyone was so so pumped about euphoria and i just think they should have calmed down but maybe it just wasn't my type of show to be excited about and i respect that queen's gambit now i loved it i loved queen's gambit i think it was so good it was such a fun drama you know like it was dramatic as hell and i never thought that chess would intrigue me so much but i really enjoyed it and um, I would recommend it, highly actually. It's just a really good show. It, again, if you start watching it, you will finish it in one day, because I have. But I think it's something we all should watch. It's good. 
It's just good. Next up, music. Right, so I listen to songs, not albums. Let's start off there. I'm going to talk about some albums right now, which are not all the music that I've listened to this year, but ones that I just stand out to me, you know? And then I'm gonna discuss some songs. So, first of all, and it wouldn't be my favorite video if I didn't mention at least one or five seconds of summer thing. And today, that five seconds of summer thing is their album. When Calm came out, I was not in my five source phase. And then I listened to Calm. And I was right back where I ended at the age of like 17 when I saw them live. That's, that's what happened. It brought me back to those feelings. And the album itself is one of my favorites. I think they just, you can tell how much work they've put into it. And it's just so good. Their music consistently seems to be growing with my music taste is very similar to Paramore. Paramore throughout the years has also grown with my music taste. That's why I continue to love them. And Five Seconds of Summer grow in the same way. And I appreciate that very much because they are my favorite band and I wouldn't want to stop listening to them again because I did for a while there. Young Blood was also an amazing album and I've also been listening to it for the last however many years it's been out. I got onto that train very late but I stayed on that train because it was so, so good. And this album promised and it delivered. My favorite songs from Calm are definitely No Shame, Wildflower, Lover of Mine was good as well. The whole album is just so good. I can't quite pick a favorite, you know? Moving on, Harry Styles, Fine Line. I'm not gonna say more about this because we know. And the two songs I'm gonna mention from that are Golden and She, because throughout the year, those stayed with me the most. Not saying that I don't love other songs on that album, I do. It's an amazing album and there's a reason it blew up the way it did. Next time we have Super Bloom by Ashton Irwin. I'm just so proud of him. I think you can tell he's put so much work into the album and the album's so very good and the vinyl was so beautiful and I'm still not over it. It's just, I'm very grateful for the album. Very grateful. Taylor Swift's Evermore. I know she's released two albums. I only listen to Evermore. I haven't listened to Folklore yet. Evermore, it's just a little bit more my vibe. And in particular, I want to talk about Nobody No Crime because that song... I am entitled to financial compensation by how good that song is. I started listening to that song on Monday and it's and it's my number two song, my second song on the on repeat playlist on Spotify, okay? It's so good. Um, I would like to also shout out Haim, the Haim girls. So talented, love them, love them. But just something about that song, I just, I love it. It's perfect, it's perfect. Miley Cyrus classic cards, need I say more? Exactly. Moving on, some songs that I have written down here is Potential breakup song explicit version i am so grateful so grateful for that one what a feeling by one direction i keep saying this and i'll keep saying this i never used to be a one direction stan but i became one in 2020 and i will probably remain one till the day i die and what a feeling is my favorite song another song i have written down here is tequila with lime by a band called Seasons, which I found on TikTok, actually. And I just, I like their vibe. Their songs are good, very talented, but this song in particular, I really like. Another artist that I found through TikTok is Abigail Barlow. She's the girl that sang Heartbreak Hotel, and her song After Party is really, really good as well. So good. I took a screenshot of the On Repeat playlist and the first 10 songs that I have on here, just to help you illustrate kind of what I've been listening to recently. And we have What A Feeling By One Direction, Nobody No Crime by Taylor Swift, Hallucinate by Dua Lipa, Sweater Weather by The Neighbourhood, I Am by Young Baby Tate and Flo Millie, my anthem for 2021, that one, Me and Mr Jones by Amy Winehouse, Broke Bitch by Tiny Meat Gang, After Party by Abigail Barlow, Potential Breakup Song by Ali and AJ and that's the explicit version, and Willow by Taylor Swift. And I think that pretty much illustrates what I meant with all the things that I said about the music that I've listened to in 2020. One very last thing I'd like to mention, one of my favorite things about 2020 was also 
being more active on this channel as well as my camera which I'm filming on right now because I upgraded it and I finally have a view window and you have no idea how much easier it is to film a video when you have a view window when you haven't for the whole time you've had your channel but I am very very grateful to have my channel you know my one of my favorite things about this year is having the time to post a bit more than usual on this channel which I plan on continuing and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon even if it is just to a few people. Moving on to the giveaway. I have never done a giveaway before so I don't quite know how to work with this but bear with me. But I thought <laughs> 2020 has been shitty and the end of 2020 for me was extremely shitty. Everyone's definitely had a some kind of downfall in 2020. It's just been a hard year. So to start off 2021, I just want to improve someone else's start of the year. And that's why I decided to do this giveaway. In the giveaway, you will be receiving the Mega Honey Highlighter, the Revolution Glass Skin Primer, the Liquid Celestial Eyeshadow Trio in Celestial, the Revolution Pat Bolt Lip Gloss in Clear, it's called Glaze, the Love Is My Drag Palette, which is already packed up in bubble wrap, just so it's safe, the Wet n Wild Mercalicious Lipstick, the Hawaiian Breeze candle and the Hibiscus and White Sands candle. I know it's been a hard year for everyone and I know this giveaway isn't a huge one, but I think after the year that we've had, even the smallest treat, especially if you can't afford to treat yourself right now, even the smallest treat sometimes is really nice. And I just wanted to gift someone some of my favourite items. So if you'd be interested in entering this giveaway, I will leave in description down below how to enter. It is open internationally as well, I don't mind shipping internationally. I just want to make someone's day. First of all, be subscribed to my channel. Second of all, follow me on Instagram. And number three, leave a comment down below with your Instagram handle and with your favorite thing of 2020 because I want to end this on a positive note and I want to bring only positivity into 2021. That's how I've seen people do their giveaways before. So I just thought, let me go with that because they'd be doing good, so you know? And if you're interested in any of the products, I'll try and leave a link in the description as well if you can find them but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did i'd really appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up and if you'd like to see more from me do subscribe down below i will see you guys next time happy 2021 bye